Have you ever wondered why some people just light up a room? They make friends easily, always seem to be the center of attention and thrive in social settings. While for others, well, let's just say a crowded party might feel a little more overwhelming. The energy, the conversations, it can be a lot. If this sounds familiar, you might be uncovering something interesting about yourself. Today, we're diving into the world of extroversion. What is it? What does it look like to be an extrovert? And most importantly, could you be one? You see, extroversion and its counterpart, introversion, are fundamental parts of our personalities. They shape how we interact with the world and where we get our energy. Extroverts, they practically recharge when they're around people, while introverts might need a quieter space to feel their best. We're often painted this picture of an outgoing, always talking, life of the party extrovert, but it's a lot more nuanced than that. There's a whole spectrum to explore here and by the end of this video, you'll have a clearer idea of where you might fall within it. Why should you care? Well, understanding yourself even just a little better goes a long way. If you've ever felt out of place in social situations, questioned why you get so tired after a big event or simply wondered why some people operate so differently than you, this is for you. Now, let's get into the real meat of things. What exactly does an extrovert look like in action? Let's start with the most obvious, the social stuff. Extroverts tend to love being around people. That big party we mentioned earlier, it sounds less like an obligation and more like a fun night out. They're often the ones to strike up conversations, easily make new friends, and wouldn't dream of missing a chance to connect with others. You might notice an extrovert has a larger circle of acquaintances or friends than someone more introverted. It doesn't mean they have deeper relationships than an introvert, but they have no problem widening their social net. Think of that person you know who just seems to know everyone, right? Here's a big one. Extroverts gain energy from social interactions. After a night out with friends, they often feel recharged, buzzing with excitement and ready to keep going. For an introvert, that same night might make them feel drained and eager for some quiet time. Socializing isn't the only place where extroversion shines through. Extroverts often think out loud, processing their ideas and thoughts by talking them through. You might catch them having a conversation with themselves seemingly out of nowhere, or brainstorming aloud with anyone in earshot. Extroverts are usually quick to speak their minds. They don't always overthink before saying something, and can sometimes come across as impulsive or a little too open. However, this also means there's usually no hidden agenda with an extrovert. What you see is what you get. They also tend to wear their hearts on their sleeves. Extroverts are often expressive with their emotions, sharing what they're feeling both verbally and through body language. It's hard for them to keep things bottled up. Extroverts often have a natural pull towards the spotlight. It doesn't have to be a literal stage, but they are seldom wallflowers. They are the ones volunteering to give a presentation, take the lead on a project, or even just tell a story at dinner. An extrovert generally feels comfortable with attention on them. This also means they tend to be initiators. If an extrovert has an idea, you'll probably hear about it. They'll suggest the group outing, organize the get-together, or spearhead a new project at work. They thrive on action, and waiting around isn't usually their style. Related to this, some extroverts enjoy leadership roles. They feel confident guiding others, delegating tasks, and making decisions. This isn't the case for all extroverts, but it's a common pattern. One thing that can sometimes trip up an extrovert is needing alone time. Because they are so stimulated by the outer world, that need to recharge and process internally can sometimes get overlooked. It's important for even the most social extrovert to have moments of quiet reflection. If there's one thing extroverts tend to dislike, it's boredom. They crave stimulation and a sense of excitement. An extrovert would much rather be hopping from one activity to another than sitting still for too long. They love trying new things, exploring different places, and switching things up from the same old routine. Related to this, some extroverts might be drawn to risk-taking or thrill-seeking behaviors. They enjoy that adrenaline rush and the sense of adventure that comes with pushing their boundaries. Of course, this isn't true for every extrovert, and it's important to find healthy ways to get that stimulating rush. Extroverts, more often than not, are fantastic multitaskers. They thrive in a busy, dynamic environment where they can juggle different tasks and projects. A quiet, slow-paced setting might feel too stifling for them. Extroverts are often highly attuned to the mood or energy in a room. Their own energy can be infectious, spreading to others and influencing the overall social dynamic. If an extrovert walks into a party feeling down, chances are they'll make an effort to turn those vibes around. Finally, Extroverts generally have a way of making others feel comfortable and at ease. Their open and outgoing nature encourages people to engage and connect with them. If you feel yourself drawn to someone in a social setting, chances are there's a touch of extroversion in them. There's a strong undercurrent of connection in extroverts. They value those bonds with friends, family, and even colleagues. 
When they feel cut off from those connections, it can weigh them down more than you might think. Extroverts also tend to wear a badge of optimism. Sure, they have their down days like everyone else, but they generally bounce back quickly. They see the possibilities, the potential. It's inspiring to those around them and helps keep their own spirits high. Speaking of bouncing back, let's talk about adaptability. Extroverts often adjust to new situations or surprises with remarkable ease. Their openness to change and willingness to try new things means unexpected circumstances don't phase them quite as much. Finally, how do extroverts learn? Many excel when they can talk it out, bounce ideas off others, or even just teach the concept to someone else. It's how they process information most effectively. Now, with all these signs we've covered, it's important to remember one big thing. Extroversion isn't all or nothing. It's a spectrum. There are very outgoing extroverts, and some who are a little more reserved. It's totally possible to have extroverted tendencies and also deeply enjoy moments of quiet and solitude. Also keep in mind we haven't talked much about introversion. That's a whole other fascinating topic worthy of its own video. But it's important to remember, neither introversion nor extroversion is superior. They're simply different ways of being in the world. So if you've been watching and nodding along, recognizing a lot of these traits in yourself, great. Now you have a little more self-awareness about how you operate. Maybe you're even realizing why some situations feel amazing for you, while others are just a bit much. But if a lot of this didn't resonate, that's absolutely okay too. You might be more introverted or simply fall somewhere in the middle of the spectrum. There's no right or wrong here. Here's the biggest takeaway. Understanding yourself and how you best recharge and interact with the world is incredibly valuable. It helps you make better choices for yourself, have stronger relationships, and just overall feel more in tune with who you are. Maybe this video has sparked some curiosity in you. I encourage you to do some more research, read personal stories, and even observe your own friends and those around you. The spectrum of introversion and extroversion is endlessly fascinating. Thanks for joining me on this journey of exploring extroversion. If you found this interesting, let me know in the comments. Maybe we should do a similar dive into introversion next? As always, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you in the next one.